We're going to now show you some of the more advanced features of the engine analyzer. For example, if you are, let's go back to the cam valve train where we just made some changes here. Uh, rather than having to always go and click on OK and then OK, you can just use the F5 key and the escape key to go much faster. For example, we just changed um, the duration of this cam to 220 on the intake and 220, I'm sorry, 200 on the intake, 220 on the exhaust. Let's say you want to say, make a quick change here. What happens if we go 204? Instead of clicking on OK, I'm just going to press the F5 at the top of your keyboard. And you can see it automatically jumps and calculates performance. And I'm going to press F5 again. And it's going to do what is most of the people want to do is do a comparison graph. So F5, F5 takes you to calculate the performance and show you the results in the tabular form. And then another F5 is going to show you the change on the graph. And if we go escape, escape, I'm going to click on here again. Now I'll go 208, F5, F5. And here you can see what's happening. As we go bigger, we're getting on the intake duration. We're not changing lift. We're not changing lobe separation, center lines, anything. Just going a little bit bigger on the duration. We are gaining slight amounts of horsepower up here at 5,600. But through all this lower RPM, this would be going from 204 to 208, we're losing. So until we change something, we're really not making it. Uh, this is not helping us a whole lot. We would probably have to change the cam uh, to a totally different cam. And how you would do that, again, escape. Escape. One way is type in specs. Or another way would be to pick an example. Uh, let's go through some uh, some preloaded examples here. Let's see if we can find some, uh, where are the Ford cams? Okay, there's comp cams if you want to use comp. Or let's say we're going to go crane. We're going to find a Ford cam out of all the crane cams. And it's got to be for an FE. So we're looking in the comments over here for something that looks like an FE. 352, 428, here are the FEs. Maybe go down a little bit more and see what looks like something significantly bigger than what we're doing. These are all hydraulics, or aggressive hydraulic flats, aggressive solid flat. Now we're getting into solids. And you see the duration is quite a bit more than what we're using. These are durations at 50. That's what we always report here. And uh, 244, 244, that's quite a bit bigger cam. Maybe that's too big. Um, but let's go for it. We're just playing around. Let's go for this cam. Click on there to highlight that cam. Say, yep, that's the cam I want to use. Loads them in. And because it's beginner, it just hides a lot of these specs for you. But we loaded them in. I'm going to go F5. And then F5. I'll show you some here. Do you see this little... Uh, there's going to be a little screen that pops up. That one right there for a second. I'll get into that as soon as I make the graph. F5 again to make the graph. Actually, this was not <laughs> the way to go either. We're losing big time. We went so much bigger. And something's restricting the power up top here because we're gaining almost no horsepower from going for these bigger cams. These heads are pretty good, but there's other things going on here. Probably a restrictive exhaust system and stuff that's uh, really hurting this. We're losing torque big time. But the rest of the engine just isn't, the uh, rest of the accessories and components of the engine just won't let this thing work up top. But that screen that you saw pop up momentarily, what that's actually doing, this may not make sense for the 65 Galaxy, but what we're doing is we're actually linked up, up here. If you look at the mouse in the upper right corner, we're linking to our circle track analyzer. And we are running comparisons, lap time comparisons. If I click up here, you'll see. We're linking to a vehicle program. And here you can see some results of what's happening when we make this change. We're showing actually no improvement from these two changes here in lap time. I'm going to get out of that. It's showing zero improvement, probably because um, something else is restricting the performance of the circle track car. And the engine is not it, probably because we have a bad uh, 
gear ratio maybe for this setup or something. But um, that's what's going on. They were actually linking up and getting changes in lap time for the engine modifications we're making. And here you can see the torque and horsepower comparison from between these two. And you can see what we expected. The new one is down on torque and down on horsepower compared to the last one. But we'd have to go through and make several more changes to try and figure out what's the restriction on this thing. And like I said, the exhaust system, yep, it's got a production exhaust system, just exhaust manifolds. There's no headers on this. Click on the intake specs. Um, stock intake, full heat. Stock intake, you know, with this wild cam probably isn't real good. And we got a lot of accessories here also. But let's, uh, you can see there's a lot of area here that is blank. And that's because we do not have this thing turned on to experienced user. I'm going to change this to experienced user because we're using the more advanced features. And you're going to see in preferences I did that. And you're going to see now that there's a lot more information being shown. Assuming that if you're a beginner, you may not know what all this stuff means, so why show it to you? But now since we're an experienced user, we're going to see all the stuff in things like rod length, which were not being shown before, and um, cam valve train, I guess, looks pretty much the same. But let's uh, try and make some changes to get some power out of this thing. I pick an example. Uh, let's go for some race headers. And let's go for some 1 and 3 quarter inch by 3 eighths. Put in those examples. It's giving you a little comparison that you weren't seeing before when you had the uh, when you were just doing uh, the the beginner level help. Let's get rid of this. Let's go to open headers, open exhaust. Intake. Rather than pick an ex actual example, let's go just say here. You fill in the specs for me, but I'm going to a single plane. Oh, I'm sorry. Right here we want. Let's go to a, a race single plane intake. Let's go to a 850 CFM carb. And you see here I'm changing these blue specs. These blue specs are locked into the stock 428 Cobra Jet carb. And it says changing this value means that these specs no longer match a stock 1970 or stock 428 Cobra Jet. You want to change it anyway? I'm going to say yes. And you can see what it says. Instead of giving that example name there, it says use these specs below, saying this is just generic 850 CFM carb, and let's go to mechanical secondaries. Vacuum secondaries, nope, they're mechanical. So we're making some changes here. I'm going to try and make this thing make a little bit more performance with these. Uh, oh, don't want to do that. We don't have a supercharger on this thing. Running conditions, all this stuff looks pretty reasonable. I'm going to do something here. I'm going to bump up the starting RPM up to 3,000. And now we're going to end up going up to 6,600. We're going to, we, we bumped up the whole RPM range you're doing calculations at. And again, it's warning one 209 valve looks very large for this port. So that's something we may want to look at. It might be giving us a legit um, reason to change something there. I want to continue with the calculations anyway. And now let's see what's happened. It's uh, you're going to see this little uh, link with Circle Track Analyzer pop up right there. That was some. Uh, oh, you can see now we're making some power. We got a two-second improvement on lap time, even though this is probably some old classic, a 65 Galaxy. But now we make a make a change in the graph, and you can see, wow, we made a huge change. Because this thing, we had some real restrictions, and now this thing is making some good power. We'd have to go back through and make those changes one at a time to see which one caused the most change. But look at the huge improvement. Our torque jumped from down here, way up here. If we uh, click on get a cursor up here, we're now making 570 foot-pounds of torque instead of the old 427. And the horsepower has jumped up to 450 from 340 at that point but we go up to the peak like right here not quite the peak there's almost uh, 150 horsepower improvement 561 to 413 
So now all this stuff is making a lot more sense. We're making some good power now because we got rid of some of those other um, restrictions like the exhaust system, exhaust manifolds, no headers, and a fairly small carb and a fairly stock intake manifold. Let's go back up. And since you've seen what a big change that was, let's try something else here. Let's try to use this optimized feature, which is a real handy feature. And you see it's been warning us about the intake port being not quite right. Let's say, uh, let's have it find us what is the optimum port volume, port diameter. And let's, what do we want to optimize over here? Let's say I want to optimize peak horsepower from where we are now. We're already pretty good, but let's see if we can do any better. And we're going to say, you can use any idle vacuum. Any idle vacuum you find is fine with us. And start optimizing. And it didn't change it much. It changed from 1.6 to 1.612. And we didn't change at all. So we are pretty optimized right now for the port diameter. Even though it's warning us, it looks a little small for that valve size. It works well with this combination. Let's try something here. Um, let's try optimizing cam advance intake cam duration and lift so let's have it see if it can find a better cam for us and play with the advance but we're only changing the intake i'm only changing a few things here because it gets to be it gets to take a while otherwise you can see this is pretty fast this is going you know you know about 10 20 seconds and what did it find oh it went a lot bigger it went a huge amount bigger and we went from 564 horsepower to 661. Huge improvement. So it says, yeah, I want to keep that. That's looking good. Keep these settings. I'm going to close it. Let's see what that actually looks like. We're linking up. I clicked on the graph thing before it actually linked up with the circle track program. See what it says. Eh, it didn't show much improvement. Maybe because the gearing isn't optimal for this. But let's make a graph, because that's the thing that really shows the difference. Look at that. We're losing torque down here, but boy, are we gaining horsepower up here by going to this bigger cam. Back up out of this. Let's see what happened to our idle vacuum. We haven't been paying attention to idle vacuum, and for race engines, you probably don't. But let's look down here, and yeah, we started out at 25 inches of vacuum. Now we're down to like less than 10. So anyway, we've made a lot of changes here. Why don't we click on File, save these changes. Now, if you think you wanted to go back to where this was, that 65 Galaxy 420 Pi, maybe what you should do is click on uh, Save Engine As, and instead of changing the name, which would, if we don't change the name, we can go back to this uh, name right here, the 65 Galaxy 420 Pi. But let's go here and put in a dash race now we've got a couple of engines here the more mild 65 galaxy and now this one where we're letting things go here putting in big cams headers open exhaust and stuff and maybe you want to change your comments here too let's say to uh, Make some changes to the comments like that. And since I've already changed the name and put the race on the end, I don't have to. What I could do is click on File and just save it. Save these changes to that name. The only changes that would be saved is right here, those comments I added. That's what's been saved, plus all the, you know, the things I saved originally to the race name. So that is uh, using some of the more advanced features of the engine analyzer, including linking. If you want to link, that's done here in the preferences. General operation says we're auto linking to a circle track analyzer. Preferences has a lot of good things in it. And you might want to you want to read up on this. Should show you this. Help. Display user's manual. You can do that. I'm going to do it here. It's going to pull up Adobe Acrobat. As you can see the user manual right on the screen. We looked at the optimizing. We looked at using graphs. There's a lot of things we looked at. But here we come up with the user manual. 
and now you can go through the user manual and look at it wherever you want. This concludes our demo.